Our next Off-Broadway Hall of Fame honor goes to Judith Molina, who, as anyone will tell you, was the most youthful spirit in any room that she was in. Her unstoppable and passionate question was always, what's next? That was the question that inspired her in 1947 to co-found the Living Theater with Julian Beck. They drew ideas from the European avant-garde, they helped forge a uniquely American theater collective, and they led, led it with fierceness and love for nearly 70 years. Judith's courageous work as an actress, playwright, director, and activist continuously challenged the forms, content, and style of the theater, its relationship to the audience and to society at large. For her, life and art were not separate realms, just as theater making and politics were inseparable. Over her extraordinary career, her work never lost its freshness or its bite, and she liked to remind people that she'd been arrested for civil disobedience in 12 different countries. <laughs> now that's a record to be proud of. So, here to speak of her legacy and accept her Hall of Fame award and to answer the question, what's next? for the beautiful nonviolent anarchist revolution that she spearheaded is Brad Burgess, the artistic director of the Living Theater. You know, it's hard to think about what do you say about inducting Judith Molina into the Off-Broadway Hall of Fame? It's like trying to figure out what to say about Abner Doubleday in the Baseball Hall of Fame, or <laughs> Dr. James Naismith in the Basketball Hall of Fame, or Walter Camp in the Professional Football Hall of Fame. You know, she was an inventor of the game, uh, one of many. And we, we often think about the 1950s as the beginning of the Off-Broadway movement, but the Living Theater was founded in 1947, before we even knew what that was going to be before we even knew what that was going to look like. Judith, let me tell you a little bit about her personal life because her story is pretty fascinating. She's the daughter of German Jewish immigrants. Her father was a German rabbi who saw what was happening in Germany in the 1920s and 1930s and got her and her mother out. And they came to New York when she was two in 1928. He founded the German Jewish congregation in New York City with Albert Einstein and Jacob Javits. Judith sat on Einstein's knee in her living room and listened to these men talk about the plight of the Jews in Europe, immigration quotas in New York, how to lobby FDR for better foreign policy. Her father extraordinarily with Einstein and Javits would find American Jewish widows and approach them to marry young German Jewish men trapped in Germany and say to them, well, you, you, to break the tradition, you, you need to marry out of love. In the, orth in the Orthodox tradition, you need to marry out of love. And this is an act of love. Even though you don't know this man in Germany, if you sign this paper, this marriage paper, I can go to the German Jewish consulate, send those papers to Germany, and save this man and his family. So this is the beginning of Judith's political activism. She was performing at Madison Square Garden to crowds of tens of thousands, reciting German poetry to incite awareness of something that nobody believed. And that's something, that's something that we still do off-Broadway. That, that's, for me, the origin story of why we do what we do. Judith used to talk about knowing exactly how bad things can be. And that made her all the, all the more ready and vigilant to be one of the good people in the world. And so she created this wild experimental political theater company. She was a student of Erwin Piscotter. She'd be happy if I took a survey. Who here knows who Erwin Piscotter is? Raise your hand. Who here knows who Bertolt Brecht is? Raise your hand. So interestingly enough, Brecht and Piscotter were close working partners. The big difference is that Brecht left behind a stack of scripts 
as a playwright. It's much easier to study and learn about in history. Piscator was a director. His work was ephemeral. The two of these men dreamt up the modern political theater. And Judith did it. She went and did it. Inspired a little bit with the soul and vision of Artaud. She was given, I think, the first English translation of the theater and its double. In the 1950s, it was delivered to her doorstep by some crazy Frenchman that decided to find her and, and Julian in, in a, a house they were staying at upstate. But Judith wouldn't want me to just talk about the past. Um, she'd want me to talk about what's up next, like was said. And let me just tell you first, for me, I didn't know any of that about Judith Molina when I met her. No idea. I'm not, I didn't major in theater in high school. I moved to New York when I was 19, knowing absolutely nothing. I met Judith when she was 80 years old. And I, we were doing a revival of The Brig, a classic American play. Got the living theater kicked out of the country in the 1960s. And she was coming from breast cancer radiation treatment to rehearsals. I, I could not believe what I was seeing. This old lady would come in. I had no, who is this woman? You know, I auditioned from Craigslist. You know, what the hell this play was or who these people were or these crazy stories that they were telling about Bob Dylan and Yoko Ono and the doors and, you know, the names are incredible. It's like Austin said, the names of the careers of the people that were the shoulders were standing on. And she would come into rehearsal and her husband would drop her off, Hannon, and she would put her head down like this and we'd march for like, 40 minutes, Steve Ben Israel would march us for 40 minutes until she slowly picked her head up off the directing table and just started directing the play. And for me, I thought, oh my God, why are you late for rehearsal? This woman is coming from breast cancer radiation treatment on time, five times a week. And that to me is who she is. She's a survivor. And that's who we are. We're survivors. We don't have the attention that the commercial theater has, even though we make it all happen. We're the bedrock of what creates what's next. We decide what's next, not Broadway. We do. Judith did. Luckily, we have a very vibrant company. We're going to start our 70th season next year. It's my honor to be artistic director, but unfortunately, as some people know and, and some people that I'm friends with, it's marked by the passing of, a, of, of one of my best friends. Judith was one of my best friends in the entire world. I lived with her after her husband died in 2008 and took care of her. She was an emphysema survivor as well, uh, and that's not easy. And we oversaw her move to the Actors Home in Englewood, New Jersey, which is run by the Actors Fund. And that's something that I want to talk about. We're good. We're going to keep making play after play after play after play into oblivion. We talked about a $12,000 budget as being small. I wish that we had a $12,000 budget for our next play. I will sign up for it right now. It'll be about $12,000 more than we had for our last production. Um, but the future of the living theater and the future of companies like it is really up to more than just the artists that are creating it. It really is about activism. It really is about social responsibility. It really is about the artistic directors across the board on all budget levels in Off-Broadway uniting in some way, touting the half a billion dollar contribution that we make to the economy and saying, imagine if we received even more support, how much more would we contribute into the economy of New York City? We're able to turn $1, I think, into $1.3 or $1.4 is what we do. So we take money and we turn it into more money. We don't get to keep any of it. <laughs> we don't get to make any of it, but that's what we do. We're an economic engine. So I, I, I want to leave here challenging us to figure out a way to keep coming together more and more. Judith would be happy about Fun Home in Hamilton. She would be really proud that that's happening that there's this road, Broadway, off-Broadway, off-off-Broadway, but it's just not enough. Theaters are closing still, and we've barely survived the economic recession. And we have to do a lot more together, and we have to take that responsibility very seriously because people like Judith did, and if it weren't for people like her, we wouldn't be here. 
So I'm sorry to end on a solemn note, but I know that Judith would want me to say that there is a lot of work left to do, and I really hope to do it all with you. Thank you. Thank you.